because we're on page seven of this book. An open heart. In my case, at the age of 16, I lost my freedom and at 24, I lost my country. I have been a refugee for the past 40 years with heavy responsibilities. As I look back, my life has not been easy. However, throughout all of these years, I learned about compassion, about caring for others. And this mental attitude has brought me inner strength. I don't know, like, and the thing with being the Dalai Lama is you, you are seen as this high being with, um, who's, you know, really super kind, super strong, uh, he's looking after his people, and a lot of people look to him for strength, and I just think every time he blows my mind, like, to have gone through such horrific experiences and still, like, still... Uh, love people just really oh we just he is quite remarkable I know other people have got issues with him but I don't have an issue one of my favourite prayers is so long as space remains so long as sentient beings remain I will remain in order to help in order to serve in order to make my own contribution That sort of thinking brings one inner strength and confidence. It has brought purpose to my life. No matter how difficult or complicated things may be, if we have this type of mental attitude, we can have it in a peace. Again, I must emphasize that we are the same. Some of you have the impression that the Dalai Lama is somehow different. This is absolutely wrong. I'm a human being like you. We have the same potential. Spiritual growth need not be based on religious faith. Let us speak of secular ethics. Secular ethics. I believe that the methods by which we increase our altruism, our sense of caring for others and developing the attitude that our own individual concerns are less important than that of others are common to all major religions, major religious traditions. Though we may find differences in philosophical views and rights, the essential messages of all religion is very much the same. They all advocate love, compassion and forgiveness. And even those who do not believe in religion can appreciate the virtues of basic human values. Since our very existence and well-being are the result of cooperation and contrib contributions of countless others, we must develop a proper attitude about the way we relate to them. We often tend to forget this basic fact. Today, our modern global economy, national boundaries are irrelevant. Uh, talk to coronavirus. Not only do countries depend on one another, but so do continents. We are heavily interdependent. Oh, it's not something you even have to dream up anymore, is it? It's just happening. It's like living in a sci-fi movie. When we look closely at the many problems facing humanity today, we can see that they have been created by us. I am not talking of natural disasters. However, conflicts, bloodshed, problems arising out of nationalism and national boundaries are all man-made. I just get it. I get that we want to hurt others because we're angry or frightened but what if we were supporting each other and creating healthy environments then people would do less of it 
and this whole attitude that we must take from others and reduce their living standards and stuff like this out of the fear that maybe a couple of them are going to get lazy. I just don't, it doesn't help us. If we look down from the world, at the world from space, we would not see any de demarcations of national boundaries. We would simply see one small planet, just one. Once we draw a line in the sand, we develop the feeling of us and them. As this feeling grows, it becomes harder to see the reality of the situation. In many countries in Africa, and recently in some Eastern European countries, such as the former Yugoslavia, there is a great narrow-minded nationalism. Is there? In many countries in Africa. And he forgot England. In a sense... In a sense, the concept of us and them, MAGA, is almost no longer relevant as our neighbours' interests are ours as well. Coronavirus. Caring for our neighbours' interests is essentially caring for our own future. Well, that, I mean, like, that is paying people in the NHS a decent wage, isn't it? If we've got, if we're, if we're paying out for others, they're not going to infect us. We're going to have a good healthcare system. Everyone bangs on about how this is from the left. It's a lefty blah blah blah. And I just it's not. It's just like don't let people around you fall into pestilence and poverty because it's going to affect you. We're one we're one organism. If you're gonna let one bit of you rot, then you're letting yourself rot. I just don't it doesn't make any sense. Today, the, and then that's it, not even in compassion. I mean, like, I, I can't bear to see anyone hurt in any way, but just, like, just out of compassion. If you're not going to take compassion as a, as a reason to not let people live in pestilence, then why not think about yourself? And if you're thinking about yourself, then you want people to not want to rob you. You want people to be content with their lives enough to leave you alone, don't you? Today the reality is simple. In harming our enemy, we are harmed. I find that because of modern technology, technological evolution and our global economy, I find that because of modern technology evolution and our global economy, and as a result of great increase in population, our world has greatly changed. It has become much smaller. I mean, that's mad, because if you were born in the Patala and... You couldn't really even ring down to the basements. And now you you can be in Dharamasala and give a live cast teaching across the globe. I mean, you're going to feel like that, aren't you? However, our perceptions have not evolved at the same pace. We continue to cling to old national demarcations and the feelings of us and them. War seems to be a part of the history of humanity. As we look at the situation of our planet in the past... Countries, regions and even villages were economically independent of one another. I was thinking about this and the amount of kings and tribes in Africa and things like that and how because there was no technology, their little villages and, um, well, in England we had the same, uh, just were people in, in small groups that, that, that you can only go as far as you can walk. So that's your world, as far as you can walk. But now it's as far as you want, maybe even into space. I would like to go there. Under those circumstances, the destruction of our enemy might have been victory for us. There was a relevance to violence and war. However, today we are so interdependent that the concept of war has become outdated. Wow. When we face problems or disagreements today, we have to arrive at solutions through dialogue. Dialogue is the only appropriate method. One-sided victory is no longer relevant. Who said it? Was it, was it um, Tony Benn? He said, I can't remember who said it. He said, if all this conflict always ends up in a group of people in a room having a discussion to stop it, why can't we just start at that point? One side of victory is no longer relevant. We must work to resolve conflicts in, in a spirit of reconciliation and always keep in mind the interests of others. We cannot destroy our neighbours. We cannot ignore their interests. Doing so would ultimately cause us to suffer. Therefore, I think that the concept of violence is now unsuitable. 
Nonviolence is the appropriate method. Nonviolence is the appropriate method. I like that. Nonviolence is the appropriate method. I always felt with Buddhism that I was on Star Trek. Anyway, that's enough. Thank you very much.